to the cloud. This is June 8th, 2021. This is Glenda Carlin. I'm with our study group on A Course in Miracles on Tuesday night. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. And for those later that watch us via YouTube, that's wonderful. We love that. And so here first, we will... Uh, invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, Ascended Masters, Enlightened Beings. Be here, help us, inspire us what to do and say. Also to have fun. Thank you, thank you. We want to welcome in all of you. Jesus, don't you love that? Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, Ascended Masters, Enlightened Beings. Any and all um, higher souls, higher selves to help us. Um, and now we will meditate for a couple of minutes here. Um, so if you want to just get comfortable there in your sanctuary, wherever you are, and visualize that huge sun above your head, like a thousand suns, it's there. God's source is there. And these beautiful rays are there a one coming down to each person, a column, a pillar of light surrounds you is there always, it's always there. And picture it going into the earth. You wanna be feel grounded, not floating into the earth. And I will turn off my phone. Um, Although we can use that just as a thought to overlook and, and go back to the light. Anything can be done, used that way. So you, that, that light I usually walk with my sister each evening and she's forgotten. So I had to text her. Or she's going to keep calling. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, you can only laugh. So picture that light that surrounds you, that column of light. And it's so loving, so pristine, so beautiful. You want to join with it. But before you do, See an altar and put on that altar the things you think you need to be happy. And then see that altar and your body disappear into the light. And now focus your attention on that light. It's an invisible light that's there, although sometimes you can see a color, colored light. And now it's so loving, so pristine, just relax, relax into that light, dissolve into that light. Now, if you don't see it, then just picture taking your hand and, and moving the clouds away, the veil away. And then look up, focus your, your eyes up, your face up, and that light is there. And just imagine you're basking in that light, that light surrounds you, and just join with it in seconds. If your mind wanders, then just no big deal. Then just bring your attention back to that light.
And when you want, you can bring your attention back to this, your room, your place, but always knowing that even during the day, you can focus your attention on that light and go there in an instant. That's so what's so wonderful about this. That light is always there. We're just not aware of it. We just are focusing on something else. This life that we, that we need to take care of, like I'm painting my buildings with a painter. So I'm out there once in a while, I'll remember walk in the light, caulk, C-A-U-L-K, caulk in the light, <laughs> dig those rocks back from the foundation so he can paint by the light, <laughs> in the light. It's all remembering <laughs> to look at that reality. That's our true reality, our true home, our true self, that light. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. So, so what tonight's discussion is, this is really kind of, this is personal for me in that I never, I had not really thought about, you know, what happens after you get done meditating, after you get off that meditation cushion, what's the mind doing? What's it really doing? <laughs> so you ask yourself, you know, what is it, you know, what is it watching it? What is it doing? Well, what it's doing, it is, it's having basically a desire. It desires Desire is the, what would you say, the root of all evil, the root of all suffering, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because in desire, we either want something or we don't want something. And that had not really dawned on me. And it came up because I was in a one day workshop with that Lama Surya Das and his uh, group. And that was part of his discussion because he does has the same thing. He gets off the meditation cushion and where's the mind? Where's the mind going? So he has to be aware of his mind and rein his mind back in. And it made me realize, yes, that's what, what that truly is the deal. But this is a big question to ask yourself. What, what are you wanting? or not wanting and look at your thoughts and they'll come down to these desires. And that's when I looked, I looked up the word desire in the course. And then I did remember that Jesus says that it's a virtual temper tantrum if we don't get what we want. And so I found that, I found that section. <laughs> oh, meaning he is right. Dreams are perpetual temper tantrums in which you literally scream, I want it thus. Well, see, that boils down to, you know, like during the day, I want my, you know, usually it's a special relationship. I want my children to act a certain way. I want my partner, my, my love interest, my husband, my wife, my mo mother, my grandmother, what, you know, your employer, if you're still working. We want them to behave a certain way. <laughs> and before you know it, we're in this wanting an expectation of what they are supposed to do or say. Now, it doesn't mean you can't plan, but planning's different from this unconscious want that you don't even know you're doing. I didn't know I was doing some of these wants. They're just so automatic of wanting things to be a certain way. To, people to act a certain way. So as I mean, that really kind of not really kind of set me back because it's, it's like, yes, th we think we've progressed further. I think I've progressed maybe further than I think I have. Because if I look at my thought, my feelings, then that tells me what thoughts I had. So then how this came up was I started realizing I had a want that a person would do a certain thing. And because they weren't doing it, I felt disappointed. 
And I recognized I was a little out of kilter for a day or so. And it took a day before I, I realized, hold it. I'm not feeling peaceful, happy, joyful. What's the deal? What thought have I had that caused this disruption of sadness, anxiousness, disappointment? And then I had to admit I was expecting a certain thing from this person. <laughs> and when I didn't get it, I was disappointed. So then I had to choose again the same thing that Jesus teaches us in chapter 31. We choose again to think differently and realize that I had agreed with ego about this and choose to ask Holy Spirit to see it differently and, and rise above it, rise above the battleground of these figures and thoughts because that's the other thing that came here, came up, is the statement that Jesus says where we see dream figures come and go, shift and change. Um, and, and that is, let's see. <clears throat> oh, now that thing about per perpetual temper tantrums, that's in chapter 18, section two, paragraph four. Dreams are perpetual temper tantrums, temper tantrums in which you literally scream, I want it thus. And in essence, also, there's going to be paragraphs here where Jesus says, we are the cause, the mind's the cause, and the effect is what this dream looks like that shows up in front of our face. Dreams show you that you have the power to make a world as you would have it be, and that because you want it, you see it. So what do you want? What do you want? And there's going to be a section where Jesus has those four questions. And the last question is, um, last question is, where is the last question? Oh, here it is. And do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? So do I want, and do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? So as I make these false idols, these the, we still have to live our life. We got our families, we got our relatives, we got our coworkers, et cetera, TV news, everything. But we become more objective, more of an observer and a decision maker, and we're not entangled with the, the outcome and, and we're kind of watching things come and go. But what, what do you really want to see what I deny because it's the truth? And that is the vision of Christ, where you, we can look out and see that clear, invisible light of immortal spirit of God, that all our brothers and we are one in that clear, invisible light that's just beyond the body, past the body, that when we practice true forgiveness. So we just keep practicing true forgiveness and ultimately and really desire. <laughs> what do you really desire? <laughs> Take de desire, D-E-S-I-R-E, -E, to your advantage and write down what do you desire? And you be the cause in your mind of what, you're, what dreams you're wanting to see in front of you. Because Jesus says in here somewhere, these dreams of chaos end up becoming happier dreams. That results along the way as you take charge of your mind and practice true forgiveness, meditate and turn your day over to Holy Spirit, and he heals unconscious guilt, then the things, it, your dream become it does become happier, more peaceful, happier. Um, now, what was I, I was looking for? I was looking for the part about the dream figures that come and go, shift and change, suffer and die, but we're not deceived because we know what the truth is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but that's really big, isn't it? Okay, here it is. In the Manual for Teachers, Manual-12, I guess, <clears throat> paragraph six, sentence seven. Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. 
Because see, we can still enjoy this dream, this movie, this projection, because in the in the course, Jesus says, behold, the great projection, the great movie. We can still enjoy it, but we're aware that we made it up and we're dreaming. So that's that observer, the decision maker, where you're you're behind, like you're you take your attention behind your body and you're kind of watching yourself in third person do these things like today watching myself out there painting caulking sweeping doing those things and it all that matters is we do it once in a while you I guess like when Jesus he finally got it all 24 7 we're wanting to just take charge once in a while during the day where then it becomes automatic to us but here's in that manual for teachers Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. They watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die. Yet they are not deceived by what they see. They recognize that to behold a dream figure as sick and separate is no more real than to regard it as healthy and beautiful. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams. And it is this God's teachers acknowledge as behind the dream, beyond all seeing, and yet surely theirs. So behind the dream is this vision that you will develop, where you're, you look out and you see that clear, invisible God light, uh, Christ light that's there. So here are some sentences that Lama Surya said that really helped me, and I thought I'd share them with you guys, about how to let these dream figures come and go. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. Let, <clears throat> let the dream figures, watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, and don't you, I mean, this one, like suffer and die. Oh, man. Yet we're not deceived. Does it mean we might not be called to help a person that seems ill, not uh, help the environment, help our local neighborhood do something? There, I'm not saying that we're not. We're just going to sit at home and meditate and just practice true forgiveness all day long. You'll be guided what what to actually do in the dream. But here's some things that help me that he says: letting things come and go. Isn't that cool? Letting things, you just watch this, letting things come and go. And it's like, it's kind of seeing these things like you're writing things in the air, they're impermanent, you know, or like waves on the ocean. These waves are going to go and they're going to come. You're just picturing some images that are going to help you visualize that these dream figures just come and go, shift and change. And also you're going, here's, I'll just keep going, letting be. So when we watch these things that happen in front of us, can we just let them be? Or do I think I got to change them, manipulate them, move them around? You know, don't like it. I want it different. I expect something different. Now, again, it doesn't mean you're not, you can't sit with Holy Spirit and ask to be inspired what you're to do or say about boundaries or where to take your vacation or how, what fun to have. But you're, you're in a different position then. You're not in the middle of it, entangled in wanting something to be different. Here's another one. Leave it as it is and rest your weary heart and mind. Is that not cool? Leave it as it is and rest your weary heart and mind. So that's like kind of take a deep breath, kind of just relax. Maybe to think about going to that light for a second and just kind of stand back. Sometimes people say count to 10, you know, just count to four before I react and want something different, right? Uh, and then ask yourself, this is really big. 
what is thinking all this stuff? <laughs> what, what is doing this? <laughs> Who is hearing all this? What's hearing all this? What's thinking all this? Um, because then that takes you back a second and you go, well, hold it. It's my consciousness. It's my awareness that is really hearing this, watching this play out. And that can be your high, your higher self. So your higher self can stand back from this stuff and not just jump out there and react because that's ego, <laughs> of course. And then here's another one. Mind your own mind. So that's like watching your mind and those thoughts. And another one is you can't sit you can't believe all these thoughts that are going on in your head. We can't do all these things those thoughts are saying to do. Ego is just talking and chattering and sorting and separating and categorizing and judging size and this and that. You, once you see the first half of the lessons are for you to start to recognize what the heck ego's doing, what ego's behavior is. And the second half of the workbook is to be aware of your higher calling of your higher self, God. Okay, now here's another cool one that I that helps me too, is he calls, Lama Surya calls this alignment. And I didn't really get that. But now I do because now we got the great ray that's here. It's vertical. The alignment is in your mind, you align. You go to that light and you kind of imagine, not because it's there, this vertical light. You're aligned with it. When you're aligned with that light, you're less likely to react and be, you'll be more observant. But also, I forget in which religion or could be Hinduism, I forget. They say there's a silver cord. There's like a cord, a thin cord, which is from eternity down through like the crown chakra, through the form, down into the ground. And that, see, these different face, some of them have this similar thing that Jesus is talking about in A Course of Miracles, which is the great ray. So align yourself, use that word, jot that word down, and maybe that'll help you. Remember, go to the light, stay vertical with that, because horizontal is this mortal world out here, the battleground. We want to rise above it, and to rise above it is vertical thinking, and, and we've been talking about the holy instant and a holy relationship. And a holy instant, and there's only one of them. There isn't a holy instant, then another holy instant, and another holy instant. There's only one. But we're just not aware that there's only one. But it's there just like the light. And you can tap into it by being aware of it. But that holy instant or nowness awareness is where this vertical line, this vertical great ray meets this horizontal line of the mortal world. Where that 90 degree point is this stillness, is this nowness moment where the Christ self can be, you can be aware of it because it's there. That's that nowness, that holy instant is where the vertical axis meets the horizontal axis. Jesus talks about that only one place in the course, but it works. I mean, that helps me. Oh, here's another, assume, assume your Christ seat. Okay, that chair you're sitting in, assume your Christ seat. You are, you are a Christ self. He says, assume your Buddha seat. <laughs> assume your Christ seat. Every time you sit down or you're standing somewhere, assume you're Christ self. Just go there. You are the holy son of God. You, I mean, you're everything in you. You are the light of the world. In you is everything in that light. I mean, is that not like mind boggling in that light that's invisible is everything is your true source you're all our brothers in our higher self in oneness in that light 
And the glue that holds that light together is love, is the eternal love of that we really are. So <laughs> leaving it like it is, here's another one. Just leave it alone. <laughs> leave it like it is. Now, because in a dream, in a dream at night, when you're dreaming, we don't go manipulate that dream. <laughs> I guess some people are lucid dreaming. They may go in there and manipulate, but really what's happening then, in my perspective, they're thinking it real and they're manipulating the chairs on the Titanic. They want those forms different. They want those forms acting different. They want the world different. Now, I get now, I guess. Holy Spirit, or uh, you could ask Holy Spirit this, is we want to pray or ask for ultimate awakening for everybody, enlightenment for everybody, peace, happiness, calmness. So in that dream that we're having, we could go there and change those people that are arguing to happy people where they're, where they're dreaming their happy thoughts. They're getting along. They're peaceful. So I sort of do have a different perspective about lucid dreaming if it's, if it's trying to manipulate it and wish people well, you know, wish them well and peace, awakening, enlightenment. <laughs> um, another one uh, here is relationship mindfulness. Now, in these paragraphs that I researched, Jesus talks about especially the special relationship is where we definitely are wanting things to be a certain way or we're, we're grasping, we're clinging, I want this, and we're grabbing that stuff and bringing that stuff to us. Then other times in that special relationship, we're just shoving things away. We don't want that. We don't want them acting that way. I don't want them talking that way. I don't want blah, blah, pushing aversion. So it's either wanting, bringing it to ourselves or pushing it away. And both of those things are desire. That's of the ego. Now, again, we, we can still ask Holy Spirit to have a civil conversation, a sane conversation with our loved ones about things that could be bothering you or that to make the relationship work smoother, et cetera. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to be aware of when we're knee jerk, wanting and unwanting. But in this special relationship, we put ourselves in the other person's shoes. So then you can think about, well, how are they thinking? How are, why are they saying that? So then you have empathy and compassion for them. So you're not reacting. And then that might allow you to have a saner conversation with them while you're practicing true forgiveness, looking past their body to the uh, immortal spirit that they are. So while we're doing the boundaries or talking with them with the same conversation or just enjoying life, being spontaneous, not having to plot and plan everything, you still in moments, if we can remember to think of them as immortal spirit, practice true forgiveness on them. But, it, but again, it's we want to live beyond desire. We want to desire like is the root of all suffering because picture if I want this and I don't get it, I'm disappointed, I'm sad, I'm suffering, I'm in pain. I'm depressed, I'm anxious. There's all these words, feelings that, that help you realize to, um, to choose again. If we're not feeling peaceful, loving, happy, then we choose again to ask Holy Spirit to help us is the crux of this whole deal. But if we realize it's the dream, then um, um, that you're dreaming the dream, you're the cause. We're each the cause of our own dream. Our mind is the cause, our thoughts that we're thinking. And don't you love this one about I'm responsible for sight. So we want to say that. I love that one. Responsibility for sight, chapter 21. 
I am responsible for what I see. And when I say that sentence, I'll say to myself, well, Glenda, what do you want to see? Now, each of you will answer whatever that is that you want to see. Well, what I want to see is I want to see with Christ's vision and see that invisible light. Remember to think of that person as immortal spirit. I want to see that light. I choose the feelings I experience. And I'll ask myself, well, what feeling do you want to have, Glenda? I do. I stop and ask myself. Because, see, this is reaffirming to yourself how you want to live your day-to-day -day life. And I'll go, well, I want to have loving feelings, happy feelings, peaceful feelings, but really loving. I want to be, have loving feelings. And the next one was, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And I'll ask myself, well, Glenda, what goal do you want to achieve? So I put myself on notice. What I'm not just mindless, just letting the ego run roughshod on me and just saying these sentences all day long and I'm not interrupting him and I'm not choosing again. I can take charge of my mind. That's what Jesus wants us to do. And then the end of this thing says that everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Now, that's a hard nut to swallow. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Well, that's because we each agreed to our own script. In that nanosecond when we had that single mad idea as a group of um, Christ self, um, in that nanosecond, God created Holy Spirit, and then it, the atonement occurred, where the separation never happened. We're safe at home in heaven, dreaming a dream of exile. But in that nanosecond, all these hundreds and thousands of lifetimes, all that script was agreed to by each of us. But within the script, there's different dimensions of time and space. So the, and there could be a million of those. I don't even know how many dimensions of time and space there are because picture you, if you decide you got a list, you're going to go to the grocery store, but you decide to wait, you get a thought, I'm going to go do something different here in the house, do laundry or whatever. You just changed into a different dimension of time and space because you weren't out driving in the car where there could have been an accident and something else happened. So I don't know the number of these dimensions of time and space, but the point is, when as you do your forgiveness work, Holy Spirit heals unconscious guilt. So you go into a different dimension of time and space, and you don't even may know it. You may you and usually don't know it. Sometimes when I'm meditating and in union with another person in a holy relationship, I will hear that a high pitched sound and it go it starts and it goes like to eternity and holy spirit says i'm changing dimension of time and space for both of you so uh so that special relationship that is part of this desire because that's when we set say had the single mad idea we wanted to be alone and do things on our own and want the things we want and make the things we want, and destroy the things we don't want, it's all desire, is um, we can choose, we can choose again to recognize that I'm doing this to myself. But it's practice. I mean, because it's just so knee-jerk, this stuff happens before you know it. Um, when you meet, here's the other big deal that we like to, I like to reconfirm. When you meet anyone, remember, it's a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. This is in chapter 21, uh, section one, paragraph 10. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him, you will find yourself or lose yourself. Whenever two sons of God meet, they are given another chance at salvation. Do not leave anyone without giving salvation to him and receiving it yourself. Well, that's we, we just can only work towards that. We just keep practicing, applying this. 
where we can start to remember to think of our brother as holy. Now it's seven forty one. I can want to open up to a lot of a lot of uh, question if we got questions or thoughts because this desire thing is really really big and the crux of a whole bunch of things <laughs> cause and effect in my life our lives so any in okay miss sally go for it all right so um i have a, a situation that i've had going on i've talked about it before a uh, person in our lives that keeps coming in and going and <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, she's back again in our lives and every time it's, uh, I'm going to leave that guy and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes back to him. But, uh, anyway, with everything with her, with everything in life, I've been, uh, you know, practicing, uh, forgiveness and, uh, really being conscious of my feelings and, and really trying to analyze everything. And uh, so now she's kind of like starting to go back with the guy again. And I caught myself like getting really upset, you know, like, darn it, you know, I'm, you know, I don't, if, if, if it happened, you know, this is it. She's not coming back like a crazy woman again. I'm not dealing with it again, blah, 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 blah. And I caught myself and I'm like, you were just saying yesterday that she's your savior because she's really pushing you into seeing all of whatever feelings you have with that whatever whatever guilt she's she's bringing it out in you and uh and now you're getting upset about it you know and my husband's like oh you're upset and I'm like I'm upset and I don't even want to be and uh you know and I, I thought about it and uh and I just know that like I keep thinking god I just want things the way they are and usually I am like that with everything but in this situation it's like oh you know, I feel like I'm uh, um, in Groundhog's Day, the movie Groundhog's Day. So, uh, but anyway, it's 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 an ongoing process. I don't have a problem with it. I understand that uh, this is a learning forgiveness process for me, and uh, I'm not trying to control it, but I, I'm watching myself trying to. You know, I'm watching it. I, I'm I'm trying to watch it from another level. And that's, that's what I have to share because I, I feel like that's kind of like what you're talking about tonight where, you oh, know, yeah, I, don't, I don't want to control anything, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, do I have to go through this again? <laughs> you know? Well, you're wanting the best for her. So now a couple things come to mind is remember to put her on the altar, put her on the altar because, um, you you want what's best for her, but also you realize you're entangled. You're wanting a change for her, a better life for her. But it, and then the other thing is, um, it, you can still have unconditional love for someone, but you don't have to. You don't have, let them be. You don't have to be a psychological doormat or a physical doormat or or whatever. So you're asking Holy Spirit, what am I to do or say with this person and boundaries or whatever for you and your husband to agree upon? I don't know. See this bottom line, she's there for you to practice forgiveness on to see her as immortal spirit. But forgetting one of Gary Renard's books, Art and Person, one of them tells him or somebody, somebody comments, well, you can practice true forgiveness, but you don't have to invite them to Thanksgiving dinner. You know, you don't, you don't have to have them over, you know, uh, I don't, I, I don't, my, I'm not, I don't have a choice. You know, it's, it's my husband's daughter and yeah, I don't have a choice. Okay. Well then see, then that really Holy spirit See, in your dream, then that is causing you to really practice true forgiveness on this person. And see, she definitely could be the turning point in your in your waking up. That's what I'm hoping she, for. Because <laughs> she represents the thousands of people that have 
irritate us or we've hated them or they've done stupid stuff and we've done stupid stuff to them. They represent that person. So it's a, that one could be, that puts that slow burn in Gary Renard's books as well. Yeah. Yeah. So now anybody got any advice for Sally here? On how you, you know, this is, you know, God, let me have life the way it is because this is my dream. Right. So. Oh yeah. Hey, let Glenda, it be. Yeah. I was, I was thinking while Sally was talking that entanglement is one of the ego's favorite places to go. If it gets you entangled up into all these different feelings, relationships, that it that's that's where it goes to. So, so like the course always says, wherever your feelings are coming from, it's either from fear or love. So you have to figure out, am I afraid of some like what is the root of that that I'm afraid of? And then bring it back to love. But there's fear there somewhere. So you have, to, I, don't, I don't know, I always go into my head and find out what the fear is so that I, I can. You. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's either fear, fear or love. That's true. Uh, and, oh, the ability to let things be. Boy, that's a big deal, isn't it? Let it be because it's a dream. This is your dream. And. Are you going to let things be? Watch them come and go. Yeah. And watch her like enter the room and you're over on the other side and just practice kind of watching things. Her move around the room, come and go, sit down, go over there and talk. And you're more of the watcher of the this, the observer of this while you're practicing forgiveness on her and yourself and your husband or whoever else is there as well, right? Okay, Julia's got something to share too, or a question. Do you, anyone else want to help uh, Sally with this? Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. Hi, Hi Sally. <laughs> good Sally, to see I you. love you so. It's I so good to see so you. Much. I love <laughs> you so much. <laughs> and I know you are so close, and I know that your heart is so big, and you care so much, and you have so much love. And, you know, this isn't happening to you. This is happening for you, right? This is your classroom. And she's your teacher. She's your salvation, right? That's how she's I feel. the I, one. That's yeah. what I keep telling and, myself. I go in and yeah. out. Of oh, wow. Yeah. And it's so hard because I know I've been dealing a lot with pain, physical pain, right? And I clean houses for a living. And I've known for like maybe six months or something, like, you know, I'm always like, I, after like five hours, I'm just like, I want to die. Um, and I don't like this anymore. <laughs> and, you know, but then I know that like, then that voice says nothing in form matters. And so I've been like, I know, I, I believe that. And I want to overcome this. I feel I want to heal this. And I, I want to, I know that I could clean a house for eight hours and not be in pain, right? I want to demonstrate that. And so that's, that's like a weird thing too. But I got a whole bunch of weird stuff that's going weird. on. That's I, not know, weird. Go on and on, but, but that's you know, like weird. that I can see that they're my classrooms and that these are, these are places that I can really use. And so I was like yesterday, I cleaned and, and then like right around four and a half hours, I got this big, huge knot in my left upper um, back like hip and lower back and it was so painful and I was just like oh here we go and I've got another and then I had another job to do today like a really like a two person two uh this woman had all her, her children and grandchildren and um oh I gotta change my earbud um maybe well, now, while, while you're mm -hmm. doing it yeah we oh, can hear we you can you switch my thing? You got him. So anyway, so, and I'm like in a lot of pain and I'm like, I, I have to work another day tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, I asked, I just asked, what's his name? Someone for like, can I have six Advil? And then, um, then I was like, 
but don't take it yet. You know, I kept saying, don't take it yet. And I was like, you know, guided just wait, because I knew I wanted to work with my mind with my thoughts, right? I didn't want the pain because it's not real. That's what my ego is tr using to, tr um, to make it real try to make it real. I, it, the physical pain, right. Th that's a big ego thing that it's mm -hmm. trying to grab me and, and take me down and who it's like grabbing my ankles and pulling me down. And I'm like, <laughs> no, you ain't taking me. I'm not going. And so I'm going to clean. I'm going to clean like a mad woman. And so, you know, like literally that's like what I do. And so I, I did it, you know, and I didn't take any Advil today. And I, my mind though is still looking and watching, where's the pain? But, well, I feel a little bit, I feel, I, I feel a little bit of pain there, <laughs> you know, but it's like, stop it. Really, That's you could, you rose above it. You really did rise above some pain. That is yeah. great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Got a girl. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It, yeah. Mine matters. But again, again, you still, we don't, uh, the, do we do the Advil or the Tylenol when needed? Yeah, we're not pushing it yeah. so far that the body is way out of kilter. You get it. You know what you're, de you, you don't want to, ego's always wanting to do something with the harm, the form, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I'd rather it's like take the Advil and, uh, and stay in joy, you know? Yes. Right? Like yes. then I can stay in joy. And like, sometimes it's, the physical pain will just, you know, feel overwhelm, overwhelming, and then that's okay. Then, that then I usually get guidance. Take some Advil now. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, see, good point because the course says that's when Jesus says we can compromise on that when it comes to the meds and this because, like Gary Renard said, he had he knew of some friends and they tried to use the mind to heal themselves and they died. We want to stay alive so we can wake up from this dream, you know, and part of it is your practice in controlling your mind. So, but you're, yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to think about the people that show up in front of our face are, we ask for, and they're our saviors. Each one of them is a holy encounter. If I want to think that way, it's not easy. No. At all. <laughs> Congratulations. It's not. You just keep going. Take deep breaths. You know, take some deep breaths while this is going on because we, we tend when we're in reacting like that and entangled, like Dee said, with those emotions, that's when you know we're entangled. We're expecting something different. We don't like how something's happening. We're pushing. We're not wanting something. We want something. We not want something. Then, then we just... Uh, take some deep breaths, recognize what you're feeling, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And you might need to walk out of the room, act like you're going That's to the exactly, restroom or something. I don't know. Exactly exactly what I did this evening was I need some deep breaths. I walked out of the room. I connected with Holy Spirit. I, I got in the light and uh, I just said, you know, tell me what to think. You know, I, I, I need to see this in a different way. And, wow. Uh, See, that's literal. That can help all of us. See, that's the literal. You're applying this in your day to day life. A lot of people don't recognize their own feelings. They don't. Then so it pat yourself on the back. You recognize how you're feeling, what you're thinking, and you don't want to think that or, you know, that's great. It's <laughs> great. Way to go, Sally. Now, Lynn's got a buddy showing up yeah. here. This is Look Lola. This. this is Lola. Oh. And Lola is deaf and blind. And oh. she, she's the oh. tiny one of the crew I'm taking care of. I've got four dogs. She's the oldest and with the most problems. So I have to watch her closely. Yes, I do. Oh, yes. Yes. I do. Oh. Yes. Oh, what a doesn't, sweet doesn't she remind you a little bit of Toby? She has a little. That's she, my dog. She has a black and white, but she didn't have the face like Toby. <laughs> I have a Toby <laughs> dog myself. <laughs> so uh, Lola keeps walking around me like, when are you going to sit on the couch so I can sit next to you again, Aunt Lynn? <laughs> so hold her. So yeah. hold that baby. Yeah. And she said, oh, I don't know if I want to be held. I just want you near me. 
<laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh. <laughs> so yeah. sweet. I had to Lynn. stop for a minute and take her outside and come back because she'll oh. tell me she's very smart. She tells me exactly what she wants. She well, see, you're aware. Know, so I'm going to have to go put her on the couch and sit next to her and make her happy. Yeah. Well, see, you're aware. See, that's what we do. In, in the dream, we're still aware of what our animals want, what the people around want. And we're loving, we're sympathetic, we have compassion, but yet then still we're practicing this true forgiveness on what's showing up. It, and it's hard with our loved ones. That's that's the hardest part, the ones that are immediately around us, <laughs> our family. We're going to say Troy. bye. Okay. Oh, bye. Bye, Lynn. Thanks for bye -bye. stopping in. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Now, Troy, you had a question or a comment or something. Yes, I don't know if it matches with what Sally's going through, but I don't have a choice in my current living situation. Glenda knows what I'm talking about. We spoke personally about it. I'm a, um, I'm a high functioning woman with a mental disability that I can't multitask in order to work a conventional nine to five job to be able to earn enough more money. I do have a small paycheck. So um, I'm more or less physically stuck in the situation that I'm in. So it's a constant daily and mostly with my husband. And I realized um, that um, I've known for a long time that his behavior changed from the first year that we were in love. He didn't become abusive, like physically abusive, but every ounce of romance, consideration and sensitivity just went out of him. So Holy Spirit has been guiding me uh, all these years of what to say and what to do with him. And it's entailed a lot of crying <laughs> because I don't have the mental discipline yet to do it while I'm face to face with my husband. But things have been getting, he has actually, his behavior has been changing. And Glenda, you were right when we spoke on the phone about that this may be the battleground for me to rise above rather than try because of my disability situation is too overwhelming to, I've been trying to leave the situation and administrative stuff and I'm overwhelmed with physical moves and no relatives, no supportive people that live near me or a supportive family. And so recently after our conversation, Glenda, I uh, remembered from the course where it says that when people talk to you they're communicating only one of two things, or the, by the way, their behavior as well, love or a call to love. And so I've been asking this past week for the Holy Spirit, for Jay, for Jesus, uh, even Ken Wapnick. <laughs> I was told in one of Gary's recent books, uh, the last one, Jesus and Buddha, that Ken Wapnick has ascended, that he is enlightened. And I really feel like Ken is helping mm -hmm. me with a few different things, but um, it, oh, I also had you. I didn't know if you realized I was trying to join with you, Glenda. Oh, <laughs> I don't well, know if you, you know, I just, but I just, uh, you just, it just felt like you were there on one great. particular meditation, but uh, to help me to uh, see my husband's behavior or lack of thereof. I mean, cause sometimes he just does nothing. He's just off in his own world and not responding to anything as a, as love or a call to love. Mm -hmm. And for me, when he, when I, when I'm in pain, then that's a call to love that he is, you know, how his behavior or his words are causing any kind of pain in me. And I wish to, to just respond with love. How do I do that? What is right uh, with him, what it sometimes I think Horse and Miracles or Gary and Art and Persa, somebody somewhere it says sometimes it's just complete stillness, complete silence uh, in the face of that person. Other times mm -hmm. it may be words that you're guided to say mm -hmm. or something that you're guided to do in that moment. That is yep. my goal with my husband is to have that kind of control in in his face, and so. So I just wanted to offer that to you. That's what I'm trying to do. And I'm kind of dealing with being in a trap situation like that. Well, well put is uh, to be sane enough to go to the light and just be still 
and pause and let the person talk and be, then, and you're being in your, your higher self, right? That's the ultimate thing you can do. And in that light, you're just letting them be, let them talk and do whatever they're doing, right? Yeah, because no, I've always felt like I needed to be a part of the conversation. I don't always. Yes, Sometimes right. it means tuning him out, <laughs> just being there, but not listening to his actual words. And that's always been so hard for me. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well put. Well, see, you'll be guided by Holy Spirit. So, uh, yes, um, if if it turns out where it, it's a situation where you can't change, boy, that's definitely meant to meant to take you uh what it could be the one person to cause your awakening because you are you are such a desperate so-called looking desperate situation then you really can just choose again they make you more aware i want to practice this stuff right because picture the people that have so-called just this wonderful loving relationship nothing's ever really going wrong no so what's to spur them to want to study the course or study buddhism or study whatever and awaken from the dream right that uh, there that is uh just a lifetime of in this not being able to be aware there's a there's a higher goal to our living, but it tends to be suffering is what motivates us to want to change, right? Yeah, yeah, that desire that you talk about, um, you know, Buddha, uh, apparently, according to Art and Persis, said that desire equals suffering. Uh, the thing is, is that as he kind of grows a little bit in his own way, as far as knowledge about how he is actually behaving, which has been taking a long time to get through to him, um, he starts to try to be romantic with me again, but he's a romantic rookie. He does not know what he's doing like he did when he had all that adrenaline going when he was first falling in love. So he just stops. It gets that desire, that physical desire in me going, and then it never culminates. So I've had to and then he gets frustrated and down. Well, I don't have sex. We don't have sex. You know, <laughs> if I can just be out there with that. And I, I finally, Holy Spirit guided me to say to him the other day that um, he's not viewing what the love relationship or my presence or me as a person as valuable or um, as a gift in his life. I view him as a gift in my life, no matter what is going on. And that's you know, I don't always want to be around him and I have wanted to leave, but at least my philosophy is that love and love relationship, be it holy, special, whatever. It's so, it, it's rare to come across someone that you fall in love with. I mean, for me, it has been, I don't fall in love easily. So he, I think he finally understood that, but that doesn't mean he's in control of his mind. So he could flip back and forth all the time, just because he's been okay for two days, doesn't mean he's going to not switch back to well, this is a pain in the ass. I'm not having sex. It's she doesn't give me what I want, you know, back to the selfishness. So yeah, there's the want and the unwant that he's talking about, but also you get to see ego play out in him, like you're watching ego play out in you. So it's uh this dynamic is not easy. Boy, we picked uh the dreams, the dreams can. But see, that can spur you to take more control of your mind because you see he's not in control of his mind because that's half of the workbook from Jesus is taking, recognizing how ego acts and how we want to not, then we can choose again. Now, D brought up, D, you got your book, Lesson 191. What was it in 191 you thought might help the, uh, ever, uh, what we're talking about here? But also to remember, before I forget, is that thing that Buddha said that what uh, the root of of evil is su is suffering or desire? So right. see if you keep in your mind, what am I desiring today? What am I wanting to happen? What do I not want to happen? See, we're either clinging and grasping, pulling it to us, or shoving crap away. I don't want that person in my life. What the hell is going on? Get the hell out of here. 
So it's aversion or or a clinging, wanting. So they're, they're, but what you're getting the point. See, that's what's happening to me. It helps me recognize what I'm thinking and doing. So Dee, what is this lesson 191? Um, I just think it's a good lesson for, for tomorrow. It's tomorrow's lesson 191. It's day 191 um, that it might be helpful and in one part, it's it says, be glad today how very easily is hell undone. You need but tell yourself, I am the I am the holy son of God himself. I cannot suffer. I cannot be in pain. I cannot suffer loss, nor fail to do all that salvation asks. And it's just a good lesson for tomorrow, I think, with, with what everyone's going through. Um, Read that last part, D, about I cannot fail to do what salvation wants. I am the holy son of God himself. I cannot suffer, cannot be in pain. I cannot suffer loss, nor fail to do all that salvation asks. That last part, I had already known the very beginning part, but that last part really, wow. I can't, See, I've been feeling like I've been <clears throat> failing, you know, in my relationship. But you're not. But I know. I remember see where we're all coming from. Just remember that we are right. all holy sons of God. Right. We have to we're... keep on reminding ourselves yeah. that. And it is so hard to see ourselves as holy sons of God. You know, holy. It's very hard to see ourselves, but we have yeah. to look in the mirror and see mm. yourself that way. We have wow. to convince ourselves of this mm -hmm. because this chaos and fear and delusion and problems and every little iota that our ego wants to distract us from, it's a distraction. We have to see ourselves as the holy, as the holy son of God. It's hard. It's hard every day to see <laughs> ourselves like that. Thank you, but, Dee. Thank, thank you, you so right. much, Dee, because my, I, my mind has, my ego is now wanting to control my ACIM practice, because I rarely now, I realized I wasn't stepping out of the way and saying, God, you tell me what to think about this situation. You tell me rather than OCD with me doing all these phrases and stuff in my mind. And I'm giving myself brain strain. I'm just giving myself headaches from the over practice. So I have to t stop taking control. I, I have to, th that's what I've been doing is letting, laying back and saying, Holy Spirit, Jay, you tell me what to think of this situation. You tell me what phrases to use. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, um, there Julia, is one more go ahead. Thing, Glenda, if I could just add this in, Say, let, me, let me find it. Because it and was then just, Julia's it was, got something. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, okay. you go ahead. What is, what is it? I just wanted to say in lesson 189, which was two days ago, and this okay. is absolutely my favorite. I have it on the side of my bureau over here. I read it you every know, day. 189, I've got all scribbled up. I know. <laughs> it's 189. Um, 189, let me find it. Seven. 180, lesson 189, seven. And it says, simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is, all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself, empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad, of every thought it judged worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought that the past has taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy, um, with holy empty hands unto your God. That is that sums up the whole course, right there. I love that. I I love that. I read it every single day. Wow, that's true. That's like the meditation. If we can go to the light and not have any thoughts, just join with the light. That's in essence what that's saying is. Take, remove all these thoughts from your mind and just go to God, rest in God, right? Something yeah. like that. Now, oh, I forgot in this desire uh, sheet that says, call on God, use God's name, even besides Holy Spirit, 
because there's big power in calling on God to also help, help you as you have your challenges. Now, uh, and you know, next week we might do lesson 188 and 189. I've got both of those all scribbled up like big time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I so y'all, we'll do 188 and 189. Now, Julia brought up a point. This is, see, what we're doing, we're identifying so we can watch what's going on so we're not getting entangled or, or getting in our judgment about people. She says, Buddhism says there's three poisons, ignorance, attachment, and desire. Now, ignorance means you don't know you're holy, right? Ignorance. You do not know you're a holy son of God. Uh -huh. You just, you're ignorant of these truths. You're just, you know, ignorance. Now, attachment, look at that. Atta I'm attached to my uh, goals or my family or or what, uh, yeah, attachment, wow, and desire. Three poisons, Say, think of that one. Yeah. These poisons are some reasons why we suffer. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But yeah, wanting and unwanting. What a beautiful night, you guys. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Yeah, yeah. oh, no, no. Yes, oh, go ahead. Juliet, so... I've been practicing forgiveness on um, like when I watch the news and like one thing that came up was, you know, they caught the couple that were responsible for um, killing that like six-year-old, four-year-old boy in, um, it was in a road rage thing, you know, and they, this, this guy shot at this car and it killed this little boy. And so then they caught these and it, he had a girlfriend, she was a driver and they caught them. And so they're showing their mug shots. Right. Oh. And then I'm like, that can be you know, a huge trigger, you know? And so I'm like, okay, they're, they are spirit, whole, pure and innocent, all is forgiven and released. Like nothing happened. That's not real. Right. That's in a dream that that happened. And so my question is, um, am I making up these characters because um, that's my unconscious guilt um, being projected or is it their characters and it's because I have it in me that I'm these characters are kind of appearing in my life you know like I some I have the karma that I'm like like because not everybody on the planet knows about that 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 happened right mm -hmm. but i'm trying to use it like i used to just see these things and just be like oh my god the world is so terrible i'm so freaked out this is just so terrible terrible and now you know now i'm like wow they are spirit and they must have so much guilt that they did something like that and now they're having to that reflect back to them like oh like, I'm sure that guy, I kind of think that guy really didn't know what he was doing in that moment. That's that anger took over his mind. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't, I don't think he would, he, he didn't have a target, you know, his target was anger. His target was a call for love. And, you know, and, it, and the consequence was it killed a child. And like, is that his guilt? That's like, he has that much guilt that he, that is his dream or am I making all that crap up? Well, there's two, there's two things as I understand it. We each have our own script that we agreed to, but there's a collective uh, egoic story script. The collective, which is the world news, the whole world thing, but uh, and collective, I'm part of the collective, but the specific is whatever shows up in front of my face. So for you to see that on TV, that show, the only purpose is to practice forgiveness. And, and ego would like to get you all wallered around into it, how come it's showing up in front of you. But really, it's just there to practice forgiveness on. That's the bottom line. None of it is... Uh, now, we would never go tell anyone this was <laughs> not real and that grief and pain of that little child 
Never, ever, yeah, ever, yeah, because yeah. that is not yeah. being normal, compassionate, and sympathetic. But here we're we're teaching, we're practicing the truth. But that child had that script. That every person in the deal has that script. Uh, whatever shows up in front of my face, I agreed to. The only way to change that is to practice this true forgiveness. And you can get into these other dimensions of time and space that may not have the hard knocks on them in them that would have been there. Like drive, like Gary Renard said, he watched, the, he went and saw this movie. It was the most horrible movie. And he's asking art and a person, why did I go see that movie? And they said, in essence, they had been putting the thought in his mind to go see that movie. Because if he had gone to see the movie he wanted to see, he would have been in a terrible car accident. Terrible. They used something similar word like that. So they he changed the dimension of time and space by what thought he listened to. And later even wondered why the heck he even did it. But we each got our own script that we practice whatever people ask, well, what am I to do? Well, whatever shows up in front of your face, you practice true forgiveness on seeing them as spirit. Matter of fact, let's pick three people here. I kind of forgot and practice true forgiveness on them here tonight before, before we leave. So we'll just pause here a minute. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Boy, you guys are getting in the habit. See, that's, a, and you may not think things are changing. That's a common deal. You just hang in there because underneath things are changing because you're, think of all those years you never, ever practiced true forgiveness. No, I mean, really, or you didn't meditate and you didn't turn things over, didn't even know about turning things over to Holy Spirit, Jesus or Buddha or whomever. It's huge what you're doing and you're making strides beyond what you think. Just keep practicing, but try not to put your body in harm's way. Don't, don't step out there and do stuff just because, you know, it's out there. <laughs> Ask Holy Spirit, what am I to do or say? Am I really supposed to go and do that? Am I supposed to go to that movie? Am I supposed to go to the grocery store right now? Am I supposed to hire that person to help me with my painting, right, et cetera? So he's here to help us with our day-to-day to-do -to -day to list and day-to-day -day activities. Isn't that wonderful to know and comforted to know that there's this huge, we can't even imagine that he knows the best, highest good for billions of people. He knows everything. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. You guys are marvelous. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you. And we'll thank do lesson 188 and 189 next all. week. I love you all. Have a great week. Love you guys. Love you, Glenn. Well, thank you. Thank you. For sure. thank you. <laughs> this right. is so back great. To back to the classroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye.